Rob Seco Future Farm. Today's innovations, tomorrow's solutions. Hello and welcome back to the Future Farm. I'm here with Todd Clausen and we are sitting here towards the end of May. Todd, you know what they always say, when you see cotton flying from cottonwood trees, that is when corn rootworm eggs start to hatch. And that's not typically what a farmer thinks about, right? No. no. That, and that hatch is very important. And when you think about where we are today, and not just where we stand, but across our footprint in eight, nine, ten states, we're well ahead of normal heat unit or GDU accumulation. Mm -hmm. And when we get to a certain number, historically and theoretically, those corn rootworm eggs will begin to hatch and today we're we're well past that GDU number. Yeah and so corn rootworm larvae they make it through three instars so different larval stages and that's you know those larval stages are when they're actually trying to feed on corn mm -hmm. roots and so first instar larvae are what we have today those are just itty bitty tiny little rootworm larvae yeah. but you know they, they feed and they get bigger and our control measures get less and less effective as those larvae continue to grow so you know, what do we need to be thinking about today in terms of our method of managing corn rootworm? First and foremost, for our purposes, we think about preventative. Mm -hmm. You know, there are still, and we were just chatting, there are some rescue opportunities and rescue material that are labeled, but labeled versus effective are two different things. So we really need to be preemptive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and number one, we will start with in-plant traits. Mm -hmm. Those proteinous traits or RNA inhibiting traits that are extremely effective against corn rootworm larvae. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so these are traits, of, these are genes that are expressed in the corn plant that ultimately end up killing that larvae uh, throughout mm -hmm. their life cycle. And so those you know, range from anywhere between single or double mode of action traits, mm -hmm. so mostly double mode of action in the industry today. And now we've seen our first triple mode, uh, three modes yeah. of action. So we're going from VT4 pros Duracade and SmartStacks, SmartStacks Pro, those would be the traits that we're typically using mm -hmm. in the field today. Now, there's a couple of other methods of managing corn rootworm uh, that uh, tend to be more supportive or used in a little bit lower pressure environments. There's planter box solutions mm -hmm. that we've talked about before here on Future Farm. And how do we think about the spectrum of corn rootworm pressure and which of these different control measures to use. Yeah, good points. Uh, stacking of tools is terribly mm -hmm. important when we want to think about control of this really mean little pest. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have, even if, even if you don't have visual symptomology and we don't really start thinking about corn rootworm until corn starts to lean over and that's yep. usually about the, the 10th to the 15th of July. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a little bit too late, but, but when we think about even less than threshold potential, um, it's still causing an energy draw and a negative effect on that corn plant because it takes energy to regenerate and grow away from it. But if we have even light pressure of, of corn rootworm, we might be able to get away with a in-furrow insecticide mm -hmm. or, or we might run out with a, with a single trait uh, product like a Duracade or into a Smart Stacks and then when we get to the real heavy pressure we'll move up to our Smart Stacks Pro and there you know there are other methods out there in trait but if we get real heavy pressure then we want to stack other material in there when we use a planter box treatment that is not toxic mm -hmm. to corn rootworm but it's actually a bacteria and, and it's a methylobacteria and what this bacteria does is it colonizes on the root system and the the exudate that the plant gives off because of the synergistic effect of this bacteria in the plant, well, that's the beacon, that's the attraction to the corn rootworm larvae. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of confusing. It doesn't stop them from coming in, right. but they'll be a little bit confused and they can't find their way to a food source. Mm -hmm. that's, pretty, that's pretty hard on corn rootworm larvae. Yep, when you can't eat, you end up dying that's pretty right. quick. And so that reduces feeding on the plant too. So you know, that's one of those additional suppression or control measures that mm -hmm. we can use depending on how much pressure we have. You know, as, as you mentioned, there are those different modes of action that, uh, you know, kind of stack and become more and more mm -hmm. effective. You know, if you have your own farm and you're thinking about how much pressure do I need to be looking at before I need to go all the way up to uh, Smart Stacks Pro with insecticide, with the planter mm -hmm. box treatment, you know, wh where do you start to draw the lines? And, you know, that's a good point because what, what's the direct proportional relationship to how much corn rootworm larvae will we have? Well, it starts the previous season, and folks mm -hmm. say, do I need to use an insecticide with a trait in my first-year corn? And, and, you know, the idea is 
How many corn rootworm beetles did you have last July and last August? Because they're directly proportional. If we had one corn rootworm larva per, or excuse me, one corn rootworm beetle per plant mm -hmm. last season, that's threshold to have some level of, of protection. Mm -hmm. If we have five corn rootworm beetle per plant the previous year, now you ha now you have to up your game. You need to start stacking. Ten, we'll see at times we'll see fifteen to twenty corn rootworm beetle per plant. Well, you really need to pull out all the stops and really that farm should probably rotate to soybeans. You know, rotation is the most effective mm -hmm. uh, method of control for corn rootworm. And so, like you said, that beetle population from the prior year gives you the ability to predict coming into the next year of, of what kind of control measures you're looking right. at. If you're at threshold, you need at least a trait, maybe, you know, uh, maybe multiple modes of action within those traits. Mm -hmm. If you're sub that threshold, you'll probably you know, have some economic impact if you don't have any control measures. So using a planter box solution yeah. or some kind of insecticide is a yeah. good thing. And as you're saying, all of those different methods, so have to keep in mind that we need to mix and match those. We mm -hmm. need to rotate. We need to rotate our traits yes. year to year to year. We need to rotate then our other support mechanisms of control mm -hmm. of corn rootworm at, at the same time. And you know, when we think about traits, I'm holding from this farm, we're ranging from V4 up to V5, and we're nearly going to throw a sixth collar today. Mm -hmm. Well, the trait, the effectiveness of the traits really doesn't trigger till at least past V2. Mm -hmm. So here we are, if you have later planted corn and your GDU accumulation or heat unit accumulation has already triggered hatch, you're going to be out there with really, really small corn, small roots that don't have the protein trait turned on for effectiveness. Exactly. So late planted corn and replanted corn into fields with expected corn rootworm pressure, you really can't rely just on the trait no. for the early portion of that uh, corn's life. You really need to look at some of the methods such as insecticide, insecticide, yeah, or even even a higher level rate of a seed treated mm -hmm. insecticide, which is which is still available and fairly effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the seed treatments typically pedure within the plant and around that root zone mm -hmm. up into V5 or, v, uh, mm -hmm. or that kind of range. And right. so using an insecticide plus the seed treatment insecticide is an effective mode of action. And you know, if you want to give yourself a little bit more confidence in the ability to reduce feeding, you could also use the planter box uh, exactly. solution with that as well. Yeah. There, there are plenty of options and opportunities and stacking of protection against corn rootworm and even one so if you are in a feed a, 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 a an animal feed part of the world where you have to have continuous corn if you are running a VT application of a fungicide well you always put an insecticide in there to lower that pressure of corn rootworm beetle that are mm -hmm. going to turn right around and lay eggs for the next season exactly right well thank you Todd I appreciate your time this morning it's a pleasure sir.